Kansas, the one seed out of the Midwest. They got a nice uh, first round matchup against the winner of Texas Southern and Texas A&M Corpus Christi. So they'll look to advance, but they have lost in the round of 32 in each of the past two NCAA tournaments. Win that game, they'll meet the winner of San Diego State and Creighton, perhaps a defensive battle there. Iowa and Richmond in the 5-12 game. Providence and South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits out of the Summit League, they were champions. Uh, best three-point shooting team in the nation. Eric Henderson replaced TJ Otzelberger. Otzelberger went to UNLV, then Iowa State. Iowa State takes on LSU, who does not have a head coach right now. They have an interim head coach in Kevin Nickelberry. So we'll see how that plays out. Wisconsin and Colgate, USC and Miami. A couple of coaches that have made names for themselves in the NCAA tournament. Annie Enfield and Jim Laranega. Bruce Pearl taking on Jacksonville State who got uh, an automatic bid because Bellarmine could not compete in the NCAA tournament. So Jacksonville State on, they'll face the Tigers of Auburn. All right, so Kansas is going to move on. They're going to move on. We're going to move on as well. So we're going to go right down to that 8-9 matchup uh, between uh, Creighton and San Diego State. This is perhaps a defensive battle. Like we look at the total 124, maybe it goes under, Matt. Yeah, maybe goes under. As for the matchup here, I've got my 1-68 to up at CBSSports.com, and in that I've got San Diego State 35th out of 68 teams in the field. I've got Creighton down at 44. To me, this is, this is a San Diego State win, but it, it's 8-9, right? What do you want from me? It's, it's an absolute coin flip. Should be pretty low scoring. I do think not having Ryan Nemhard, who's Creighton's star freshman point guard, he's out for the year. Uh, hurt his wrist. I think that could come into play here, and I don't know if Creighton has anyone to answer for with Matt Bradley of San Diego State. Then again, Ryan Kalkbrenner is a seven foot one big who can step out and shoot guys. There's going to be interesting mismatches in this game. It'll be low scoring, could be compelling, but I don't, you know, if you tell me like first to 65 wins, I might say it, and no one's getting a 65. Correct. So who am I writing here in my bracket? You're writing Matt? under. No, 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 but what, what am I writing? My, am I writing Aztecs or Blue Jays? You're writing Tex. T E C S. You're thinking defense. You had the under in the Mountain West Conference Championship game as they lost to Boise State. And it went flying State. under, yeah. And they had, played, they had played a game earlier this year, San Diego State and Boise State, where San Diego State only scored 37 points. Mm -hmm. This is an under team. This is an under game because Creighton is actually defending. Wait, you could actually play defense and go to Creighton? Well, they did in the Big East title game, and that was another low-scoring affair. This one should be first one to 54, and they just go, congratulations, boys, you won. I think this is going to be a low-scoring affair. I'm going to be rooting for Creighton because Mrs. Susie Doyle went to Creighton. And, I mean, Akeem, you know what happened when we went on I do. There. Yeah, yeah, she showed me all the buildings that we got to her apartment where she used to live. She goes, look up at that window. I said, yeah, what happened up there? She goes, you don't want to know. I go, we all have a college past, okay, honey? Don't rub it in my face. I think Creighton wins, but I really like the under. Kenny, how about the under here? I, th I think the total's just about right. Uh, they, they are both great defenses. You're going to see this total come down, though, uh, probably close around 120. I like Creighton. I I'm going rolling with Creighton. Uh, yeah. Tim and I Tim and I talked about him on, on Sunday uh, or on Saturday. That they were, the, they were the best team on Friday, and they competed right down to the wire with Villanova. Uh, I, I thought they, they're, they're playing really good. Yeah, they, they lose Ryan Nembhard six, seven games ago, but it looks like they've kind of moved on and they've gotten the new new identity and they're just playing so well on both ends of the court. They do rank 18th best defense in the country in San Diego State, two top 25 Ds. So, you know, I, I can understand why everyone likes the under. It probably will be low scoring, but I think it's going to be Creighton coming out in front. All right, let's look at the 5-12 uh, matchup that features Iowa and Richmond, two conference champions, Big Ten and Atlantic Ten. The Spiders snatching uh, a little bid there as they do some bid thievery uh, on this day, taking down Davidson. Ten-point favorite are the fighting Fran McCaffrey's. How do you see this one playing out, Matt? Numbers should be bigger. Richmond's down to 12. It's 12 in name only. Richmond should be on the 13 line. By the way, bid thievery, this would have been Dayton in the field uh, but going to going to play in Dayton had they made it. Dayton's the first team out. Uh, and oh, by the way, this probably won't come into play, but uh, sources indicated to me that there actually is a team replacement policy still in place for the NCAA tournament. Highly unlikely that will come into play, but Dayton would be the first team there. I'm going to take Iowa in this spot. Iowa, to me, is playing on the level of like a two seed right now, so you got them at a five here. Big time value. Keegan Murray. College basketball fans know already know about this guy. He's been wonderful. He's been one of the most improved players in the country this season. He really might become a top five draft pick. He's already played well. 
big time stage here, wonderful player. And for Iowa to do this, guys, a year after being a two seed, getting knocked out early when they had Luca Garza National Player of the Year, wonderful story for him. McCaffrey's done a great job. I like Iowa. Yeah, don't, don't remind me because I picked Iowa to win a national championship last year because they had Luca Garza. They also had Nunji, who was a very productive player for Xavier, and they had Keegan Murray, and they also played horrible. This is a letdown spot. This is way too many points. Richmond, when you go through their roster, they got all experienced guys. What are we going to handicap in this tournament? Experience. Jacob Gilliard, point guard play, not scared, not scared of the big moment. What were they down? 15th date in the second half, came back, won that game. By the way, they beat Davidson. I know it was the last second kind of – Davidson's favorite over Michigan State, and now I'm getting 10 points? Iowa wins, but way too many points. I'll take the dog. You know, my, my number is right on in this game, side and total, but I will take the opportunity to talk about Iowa and this team and yeah, Keegan Murray and Chris Murray and uh, Bo Hannon and, and, and all of the uh, – uh, the players, the three-point shooters on this team, um, McCaffrey Suns. Uh, this this is the second best team in college basketball, and they're they're a five seed, and they showed it. They showed it this weekend. I know a lot of people are down in the Big Ten, but they are a really good conference. Nine teams in the tournament, and this team just won four games in four days, and had to play on the road basically. Uh, this was a Purdue home game. It was all Purdue home crowd, and it's a really solid Purdue Purdue team the top five team in the country, but Iowa really played well from start to finish and they, and they beat up on Purdue and they look like the better team to me. I think Iowa is that good. I have them number two in my power ratings and they're, they're a five seed. They were a five seed going into today and they won the conference tournament. How could they not move up to a four seed? I have no idea, but um, you know what? That's disrespect should help Iowa in this tournament. But again, my numbers right on in this game, I'm not betting them here. But I already have them in the championship game against Gonzaga. They'll play for the championship. That's how good Keegan Murray is. All right, we'll see about that. Best three-point shooting team in the nation, South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits come into the NCAA tournament on a 21-game winning streak, longest active streak in Division I. They match up against Providence, the Big East regular season champ. You got Ed Cooley, coach of the year in the Big East. You got Eric Henderson, a great coach there for South Dakota State. Certainly, if they win a couple games, he's going to put his name in the mix for some big jobs like Maryland, Louisville, perhaps oh. LSU. I'm just saying, yeah, if I'm they not... make a run, All if right. they make a run, I like to root for these small, uh, small without a doubt. Without, without a doubt. Big sell here. I, for I'm going to go on the big record sell and say that Jack Eric Rogers. Henderson is not going to be the next coach at Maryland. <laughs> but I get what you're saying. They got a great opportunity. I don't want to walk into this trap, guys. South Dakota State, you said that three-point uh, rate, by the way, among the best in all of men's D1 in the past decade plus. An amazing shooting team. Providence has been a, a team that has won despite its low metrics all season long. This is going to be, this feels like the most popular 13 over four pick, maybe in tournament history. Yes, because it's, it's gonna happen. Excuse me, Tim. <laughs> yes. It's so popular. You're Ed Cooley. Oh my gosh! Would you not love to be in a film session with him this week? I'm hey. going. Pro, I'm going. I'm going. Providence. I'm not even going to mess around with the number. You guys talk about the number. I'm just going to take Providence to win this game. It could be among the most entertaining must-watch games. By the way, this is our second tip on Thursday. So when you get going, just a reminder. You'll start with Michigan, Colorado State. That'll be going for a little bit. And then you get this one, a wonderful way to start your NCAA tournament Thursday. I already hired Eric Henderson at LSU, clearly. What, what do you got here? What do you got? You know what Providence is? Give me my one shot, okay? Yeah, okay, let's go. Like, this looks like a pocket square. It's not. See, it's just a bounty. See, this is just a bounty. <laughs> oh, it's, just, it's just paper towel, okay? Where I'm from, we call that Fugazi, okay? That's what Providence is. Fugazi! Yes, they are. They have won so many close games that there's actually a metric called luck. There's a luck metric. And they, according to this luck metric, are the luckiest team in college basketball. Matt, correct? Yes, but it's not actually luck. It's more about how often you're able to win in close games and that, you know, rated against the likelihood that you'll continue to do it. What we, is the meter we, called? We don't need to. It's, it's called luck, but it's at Kempom.com, and Kempom himself has said, you know what, I should have never named it luck, so let's just be clear about that. Go ahead, continue. The, uh, the con line, context, what do you want from me? The line is telling you all you need to know. Like, once in a while, you know when you look at a line, you go, that looks up. That's it. It's like an experience. They shoot the three. They didn't lose any home games. They're going to take great care of the basketball. Last time Providence stepped on a basketball court, they got walloped by Creighton. Like, they're on the other side of the mountain. They peaked too soon. The line is telling you who to bet in this game. Jackrabbits, the more you bet, 
the more you win. Kenny, what's the line telling you? Uh, the lines tell me it's right on, but I, I got to say the two best lines I've heard today, Tom Brady is the ultimate bracket buster. That was amazing. He took an hour out of the day for everyone here. And then, you know what, when Tim said, how did I become the bookmaker? Someone said, well, you have the hammer in the bag. You should be the bookmaker. <laughs> two two best lines of the day. So that uh, that made me laugh. This, this game's going to go over the total. It's got to go over the total. Both teams are far better offensively than defensively, especially – San Diego State in the metrics, 12th best offense, 220 defense. State. South Dakota State. South Dakota State. Are you getting your SD states confused? South Dakota State. South Dakota State. I don't even know what I said. South Dakota State, 12th in offense, 220 on defense. Providence should have their way offensively as well. So over the 150 for me. All right. This is going to be the last time I, I mentioned Eric Henderson in this segment, but it's only because it's going to be a segue. What are you, his agent? He replaced TJ Otzelberger, who went to UNLV, who then went to Iowa State, which <laughs> takes us to our next matchup. Okay. That's called a professional segue right there for you, Tim, because I know you're going to be doing some hosting soon. So that's kind of how you lay it out Thank right you. there. Okay. So it's LSU who has an interim head coach and in Kevin Nickelberry. Um, Iowa State, LSU, your initial thoughts of this matchup, Matt? Uh, this is the least uh, appealing 6'11 on the board here. Uh, well, I'm just saying. Don't use your funeral voice. You, no, you, I'm you not. Wedded, that I, was your I'm funeral not. voice right it's there. Not, you you not, just went, I'm really that, sorry. That's not, that's really not sorry the case. Really sorry if you're lost. Well, yeah, you got funeral voice. Love this magic, by the way. There's going to be a month of this. Can't wait, by the way. Um, <laughs> so good. Absolutely. So here's the deal. <laughs> Iowa State as an 11. Here's an interesting situation with this team. Uh, the resume is surprising that it landed on the 11 line, but in, in kind of in style and, and how good this team is, actually it feels like an 11, so I thought the committee did a good job here. I've got it ranked 47th out of the 68 teams in the field, but really what are you going to get from this game? You're going to have an LSU team uh, that doesn't have its head coach anymore because Will Wade got fired out of nowhere over the weekend, and I was talking to one source, he said, yeah, some of the players are pretty broken up about this, like you're, you're kind of you're taking your head coach away from them. I'm not saying Will Wade didn't deserve to get fired. He clearly did. People throughout college athletic, athletics have been waiting for this for happen for three years, but you're going to do this to a team and the players, you know, 48 hours before they learn who they're going to play? It, this is a hard one to predict because there's so many different variables. Iowa State will ugly up this game. They've got a good shot to kind of pull it out in like a weird 57-54 kind of deal. I will rally around LSU rallying, winning and covering this number because Iowa State's kind of been sputtering more and more as the year's gone on. I just cannot bet Iowa State because three out of their last four games, they scored 36 points and 41 points in a whole entire game. Uh, LSU, those kids on the team, they went to LSU because we'll wait. And now he's not leading this program. I think you may be able to get an emotional win, maybe one. I think they have two NBA players in Torrey Eason and Darius Days. I called their win against Louisiana Tech. They have some athletes. I, I, there's just no way I could bet Iowa State. They might score 37 points. So I'm going to go to LSU. It, it's a, right on the number for me. So I, I got a pass on this game. Um, actually, the total has dropped as low as 123. And obviously, everybody thinks it's going to be that low scoring of a basketball game. So I'm going to wait a little bit. Maybe it'll go down a little bit lower. I'll I'll take the bait and go over. Iowa State did, did score 68 at Baylor two games ago. So oh. uh, they, they show they could score a little bit every once in a while. All right, let's go to our next matchup there in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and Colgate. Uh, if you don't know about Johnny Davis, you're probably going to know about Johnny Davis uh, Wisconsin should win this game. Will they win this game? Wisconsin will win this game, and this is just a, a tough spot for a good Colgate team that can shoot really, really well. But it just so happened, first round site this year is in Milwaukee. Wisconsin plays. Wisconsin was not projected to be an NCAA tournament team before the season. Johnny Davis wasn't projected to be a first round pick, a second round pick, anything. Wisconsin's been a wonderful story, and Davis has been a top five player in America. Matt Langle is a tremendous coach for Colgate. They're going to have to go into Milwaukee and face a, a road environment here. By the way, this is your penalty ultimate game of the first round. It will be the second to last game on Friday night. It's a TBS tip. I'm going to go with Wisconsin in the spot, but we talked about Providence. Both those teams are in this region. Wisconsin, lowly rated in the metrics. It has played well in really, really close games. Colgate last year gave Arkansas a run early. Hogs pulled away. If Colgate can repeat that performance in this game against Wisconsin, it's got a better chance at keeping it close late and because Colgate can shoot well from three. I actually think it's a, it's a fun Long shot money line play. I'm not going to go there, but I just I, I think it's at least on the table if Colgate can be in it by halftime. Do the fighting Greg guards cover nine? I wouldn't lay nine. Okay. Uh, Colgate, and, and, and not just that game. You remember when they played Tennessee a few years ago? That was another game Colgate 
right down to the wire. You're getting 15 in that game. I think the line is finally caught up there. Colgate's for real. They can shoot the three. They're experienced. This moment isn't too big. And Wisconsin is sort of like Providence. They won a lot of close games. All of a sudden, everyone started believing in them. Um, I'm going to wait and see. There's no way I'm going to lay this many points. I'm going to take the dog. Kenny, you eyeing a, 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 a total here? Are you looking at the, at the side between this matchup and a 14-3? I played the dog here, too. I took took the points with Colgate. I, I'm just, who was on the committee that went to Wisconsin? Was the whole entire committee from Wisconsin or what? They gave him a three seed. Um, Ken Palm has them 34th best team in the country. A three seed they gave him, and they get to play in Milwaukee. I have no idea how that happens, but uh, Colgate Colgate's going to give them a battle here. They shoot the three exceptionally well. That's, that's the difference maker in college basketball, if you can shoot it. This team plays fundamentally sound basketball. So does Wisconsin, but they'll, they'll be in this game. They'll hang around. Yeah, it'll be a virtual home game for the Badgers, so let them march on against Colgate. All right, let's go, move to Greenville, South Carolina, USC, Miami, uh, Andy Enfield, Jim Laranega, a tough matchup, 10-7. It's a one-and-a-half point spread, Matt. Intriguing game. USC has a gaudy record. Uh, it hasn't lived up to uh, what people thought it would be in terms of beating real opponents. I just saw Miami over the weekend at Barclays Center. I will see them again. I will be here in Greenville to cover this pod for us for CBS Sports HQ because Duke will also be there. Uh, I will go USC here. I believe USC is the better team. Miami is capable. You've got an interesting big matchup between Sam Wardenberg, a stretch five for Miami who can sh step out and shoot. And then Isaiah Mobley's been a pretty nice player, along, him along with Drew Peterson. I think the Trojans will have enough. I think they're slightly better than their seed here, guys, but I don't disagree with the seed it got, if you, if you follow me there. So I will go with the Trojans in this matchup. This, to me, is among the tightest, if not the tightest, 7-10 we have on the board. I like under here. I think USC is at its best when they're defending. Mobley's been outstanding this year. Uh, the games that they've been most competitive in one, uh, the Trojans have done on the defensive end. I know when we think of Andy Enfeld, we think of Dunk City and all how much fun that was to watch. But this team is long. They're athletic. And they think this game is going to go right down to the wire. Low scoring affair under. I'm right on the number in this game. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit to the uh, USC side, lean, leaning to their so side in this day. game, minus, minus the one. All right. Let's move right along. Auburn, Jacksonville State. All right, 15 versus a two. 16 and a half point favorite. Auburn's marching on. Do they win by 17, Matt? I think there's a good chance. I just want to see, like, Jabari Smith, this is, a, this is an opportunity where you come out, you make your, your presence known, you win big time, and I think Auburn will be able to do that. But I will, I will note Jacksonville State, even though it didn't win a conference tournament, it was uh, the regular season champion, so it did prove it at that level. But I think this will be a, a big time opportunity. I got a mean tweet from you like six weeks ago because I told you to lay points with Jacksonville State, and how did it go? Not good. I, I know, and you rubbed it in my face. I, you know, I, we're supposed to be picking each other up as co-workers. Ray Harper's team is the Undertaker gift. They were dead, now all of a sudden they're alive. <laughs> like They're like, wait, we can still get to play? Uh, I'm going to take the dog here. Kenny, what do you got? I, I am all over Ray Harper and Jacksonville State in this game. I, Auburn this year, 13-3 and three ATS at home, 7-9 and nine ATS away. They, they really play great at home, but... You know what? They don't get to play this game at home. And Jacksonville State, Ray Harper, will, they'll hang around. They'll, they'll cover. So you're saying hats off to Ray Harper. That's a Led Zeppelin reference. Back to you, Hakeem. <laughs> well done. And, and how about Jacksonville State, though, right? Like, they got a free invitation to the big dance. Yes, but it's also they got the way, the way that a lot of people say it should be done is if you win your regular season championship at a mid-major level, don't you, are you most deserving to get in? It happened to break that way this year because of the Bellarmine situation. So And so there they go. get to play the Tigers. They're in. All right, how about this tasty morsel? Uh, most times covering a 15 over a 2 since 1985. So Of any 116, 8, 9, 7, Most 10. times covering a 15 seat over a 2 oh, seat to cover. That's tasty. That is a tasty morsel. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.